Hi everyone, Dr. Goyal here from Peak Human Labs, and today I'm taking another question from one of my audience members out there. Here it is, it's a question from Raj from Vancouver, who has a question about taking testosterone replacement therapy. His question here is, Hi Dr. Goyal, I'm a 55-year-old man who has documented low testosterone levels on blood work. I'm slightly overweight with the BMI of 26 and my body fat percentage is 35%. And I'm wondering if I should be taking estrogen blockers with my testosterone replacement therapy. Currently, I'm taking 200 milligrams per week of testosterone. Thank you, Raj. That's a great question. And I think a lot of men who are taking testosterone uh, replacement therapy need to think about this question uh, when they're on it. Because if you don't, you could get yourself into some serious problems. So let's, let's take a backup here. So we all metabolize testosterone differently. Every man does. It's not... It's, you know, everyone's pathways are different. You know, most molecules, hormones are all metabolized by certain enzymes. And the enzymes that we have are based on our genetics. So you inherit the set of your enzymes from your parents. And the same true, is true of how you metabolize est um, testosterone. Testosterone uh, is metabolized either to, in three different ways. It can go over to estrogen by what's called an aromatase. And the second thing is they can move over to DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone, which, you know, it provides some of the more masculine features of strength potentially, things like that. And, and then thirdly, it also directly is metabolized by, by itself. So it has three way, main ways that it can be to, uh, metabolized. All of these are by enzymes, and those enzymes vary depending on who you are. So it's very, you know, if, you, if you can, it's important to try to figure out what are your enzyme levels like. Like, you know, are you someone who's a high converter of testosterone to estrogen? Are you a high converter of testosterone to DHT? Or are you somebody who just metabolized testosterone really quickly so they need to have more testosterone in their body? So all of that, if you have that answer, that this, my following answer becomes a little bit easier. But most people do not have that answer. And so then you need to be a little bit more careful. The other one other factor that you need to consider is that this aromatase, which is what converts testosterone to estrogen, is increased in, the, in fat cells. So if someone has a higher BMI, and, and in your case, 35% is a little bit higher than what the, what the ideal is for men. We'd like to be... 15 to 19% is the athletic range. Let's say if you're between 20 and 24, I would say that's, you know, quite good. That's a good no normal range. So you're at 35%, maybe a bit too high there. So you ha you're likely to be converting more testosterone to estrogen than is necessary. And so in your case, especially with your taking 200 milligrams of testosterone, which is on the high end, you know, lots of men can be just fine with... 80 milligrams of testosterone, or maybe 100 milligrams of testosterone. But you're taking 200 milligrams of testosterone. So in that case, likely you do need, you know, once a week small estrogen blocker just to maintain your estrogen levels into a healthy range. And the way to, to check for that is by a blood test to first check what your estradiol levels are and your testosterone levels are when you're on this TRT. The other pathways also make a difference because if you are not converting to DHT, then more testosterone is available to go down the other pathways. So for example, if someone is taking a DHT blocker, let's say they're concerned about their hair loss and they're taking some Propecia, well Propecia is blocking the conversion of testosterone to DHT. So now the testosterone is backing up and is now more available and more around to be used to convert over to estrogen. So that's why people who have, who are taking Propecia or the other similar medications, Avodart, that also exists in that family, deuteracide, they are at higher risk of developing symptoms of uh, estrogen excess that happen on men who are taking testosterone replacement therapy. So that could be mood changes, that could be gynecomastia, things that are just definitely something you do not want to have if you're taking these type of uh, medication treatment. 
So I hope that helps. That's you know somewhat of a long-winded answer, and there's still other slight little other nuances, but I think you get the gist of it. Important to look at these factors, consider taking an estrogen blocker if you have some of these risk factors, and if you have you think predisposition towards converting your testosterone to estrogen in higher amounts. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please just comment into the video. If you like the video, please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you next week. Take care.